There are 100 people on death row in the state of Pennsylvania. This is part 4 of the series. Terry Ray Chamberlain, 29 years on death row. Terry was found guilty of the murders of his estranged wife, Sherry Chamberlain, and her boyfriend, Gregory Inman. On August 2, 1991, in the early hours of the morning, Sherry and Greg were discovered dead at their residence. Sherry was shot five times, once in the chest, where a bullet would have killed her instantly, and another in less than a minute. Greg was shot four times, one of them being a headshot in the manner of an execution. The shooter entered the home by smashing a typewriter through the sliding glass door, according to the police. Blood was discovered in the living room and kitchen, the two areas where the victims were killed, on the floors, walls, light switch, telephone, and sliding glass door. In an upstairs bedroom, blood was also discovered on a washcloth and a vanity. Thomas Hawkins Jr., 29 years on death row. Following a 1990 trial for the June 1989 murder of his 14-year-old niece, Andrea Thomas, Hawkins was given a death sentence. Thomas was essayed, strangled with a cord, and stabbed with a fork in the back and neck inside the West Pottsgrove, New Jersey house of her grandparents. Hawkins was retried in August 1994 after the state Supreme Court reversed the conviction on a technicality and the prosecution was successful in getting Hawkins found guilty this time around and given the death penalty again. He referred to Hawkins as an evil serial killer, noting that the 15-year-old reading resident Karen Stubbs was strangled to death in 1981 and that Hawkins had been found guilty on third-degree murder in Berks County as well. Leroy Fears, 29 years on death row. Fears confessed that on June 18, 1994, he essayed and strangled 12-year-old Sean Hagen. Hagen had gone with the intention of spending the day swimming, fishing, and having fun on a rope swig with a few pals. Fears essayed Sean later that day after luring him to a remote part of the river. Sean was then questioned by Fears if he intended to tell his parents. Fears choked Sean because he threatened to reveal the truth. He essayed the boy once more following his passing. The boy's body was subsequently thrown into the river, and on June 21st, his body was discovered floating with a tire rim around his neck. Hubert Lester Michael, 29 years on death row. When 16-year-old Trista Eng was walking to her summer employment at the Hardy's restaurant on July 12, 1993, Michael pulled up beside her in his car and asked if she needed a ride. She went inside his car after accepting his invitation. After that, Michael got out his revolver, threatened her, and drove through a secluded area in York County's state game lands. After forcing the victim out of the vehicle, he fired three shots from five to six feet away, hitting her once in the back, once in the chest, and once in the back of the head. Then, in an attempt to conceal the body, Michael carried it into some weeds some 30 feet away. Bortella Philistin, 29 years on death row. On June 16, 1993, two police officers stopped the car carrying Philistin as a passenger during a routine traffic stop in the city of Philadelphia. Philistin came out of the car as the cops got close to it, took one of their pistols and started shooting. He killed one officer by shooting him in the head and abdomen. He left the other cop paraplegic after shooting him in the head and back. At the time of the event, Philistin was carrying cocaine while working as a drug courier. Kevin Marinelli, 28 years on death row. Marinelli received a death sentence and a 20- to 50-year prison term for the 1994 Kulpmont murder of Conrad Dumchok. State appeal courts have upheld his conviction on first-degree murder, robbery, conspiracy, and burglary counts. According to his claims, a crucial prosecution witness was forced to give a false statement during his trial and was under duress not to testify during the 2000 appeals process. Out of the three guys involved in this case, Marinelli is the only one who has been found guilty of first-degree murder. Wayne Smith, 28 years on death row. The state of Pennsylvania sentenced him to death for the murder of Eileen Jones. Smith allegedly killed Jones by strangling her because he was upset that the mother of two, and pregnant at the time, had rejected his advances. Smith, who had served time in jail for manslaughter in the past, was apprehended right away. Daniel Paddy. 28 years on death row. 
Two men were shot and killed on January 15, 1991, while playing basketball at the Panetti Playground in Philadelphia, which was located at the intersection of 22nd and Lippincott Streets. LaShawn saw the shootings from across the street. Despite her initial reluctance to assist the police, LaShawn provided a formal statement in which she named Paddy as one of the two guys who had carried out the shooting. LaShawn recognized Paddy from a picture array and was acquainted with him from their neighborhood. Paddy tried to intimidate her several times to not testify at his trial. She at one point accepted money to keep her mouth shut out of fear of what could have happened to her or her family. LaShawn agreed to collaborate with the police again, but she was still terrified of Paddy. One day, when she was leaving her mother's house, a car stopped a short distance away, and Paddy got out of it, wearing a wig, a dress, and a paper towel to cover his face. He fired his gun multiple times, and LaShawn was fatally hit. Lenwood Mason, 28 years on death row. Pennsylvania sentenced Mason to death for the murder of a lady. Lenwood Mason was reportedly given a jail sentence for beating up the victim. Days after his release, Mason fatally stabbed the woman, according to court records. Yona Jeffries had been stabbed with a knife in her thigh, arm, chest, back, and head. At trial, Mrs. Jeffries' four-year-old son testified that he was in bed with his mother when Mason barged into the bedroom and attacked his mother. George Ivan Lopez, Edwin Romero, 28 years on death row each. David Bolaski, an architect from Allentown, was murdered in 1995 by Edwin Romero and three other individuals. Romero and George Ivan Lopez were both given the death penalty. The two other men received prison sentences. After going to an apartment building he owned to collect rent from a tenant named Miguel Moreno, Bolaski, 41 years old, was robbed and murdered. George Ortiz Barbosa was given a life sentence after entering a guilty plea to first-degree murder. After admitting to organizing the crime, Moreno received a 20- to 40-year sentence. John Joseph Kohler 28 years on death row. He was convicted of the first-degree murder of Regina Clark and her nine-year-old son, Austin Hopper. Kohler had previously been in a relationship with Regina. He did not murder the woman and the boy himself. He coerced another young man to do that by threatening his life. Mark Newton Spots, 28 years on death row. In 1995, Spots killed his brother and went on the run, executing three women in three counties in three days. Penny Gannett of New Salem, June Rose Olinger of Schuylkill County, and Betty Amstutz of Cumberland County were the three women who perished during carjackings, and Spots received the death penalty for each of them. Gerald Watkins, 27 years on death row. At her Homewood residence on July 20, 1994, Gerald Watkins fatally shot his girlfriend, Beth Ann Anderson, their 18-day-old baby, Melanie Jere Anderson, and Mrs. Anderson's 9-year-old son, Charles Kevin Kelly Jr. The killings were particularly vicious. Anderson was shot eight times, Kelly was shot six times, and Melanie was shot eight times. All of the shootings occurred at close range. Christopher Ronnie, 27 years on death row. American rapper Christopher Ronnie, better known by his stage name Cool C, reached the height of his popularity in the late 1980s. Perhaps the most well-known thing about him now is the controversy surrounding his role in the January 1996 bank heist that resulted in the death of a Philadelphia police officer. He is presently detained and awaiting death in a state prison in Pennsylvania. His execution was scheduled for March 9, 2006. However, it has been postponed until today. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.